Well, I'm Del Sarlet. Uh, my wife Carlene and I own Sarlet's Music in Morris. The store has been here since 1953, so we are continuing the family tradition. My parents started it back in those days, and we continue to operate it to this day. Sarlet's Music opened in 1953, run by my parents, Walt and Florence Sarlet. My dad had been a band director for a number of years prior to that at a couple small schools in South Dakota, and then came to Morris to be the band director here in 1942. He also had a reputation, a well-known musician, I played saxophone and clarinet in a variety of dance bands and stuff, so he was very highly regarded in, in, in that respect too. My mom had grown up in Milan, her parents had a, a hardware store, and she grew up in the store, and then uh, went to college and learned and became a teacher. And she taught economics, accounting, business classes in a few area schools. And my parents met when they were both teaching at the Morris School in the early 50s, and uh, decided to make a career change in 53 and open a music store. So they uh, rented a, a spot in, on a side street in Morris, and a little hole in the wall store on 6th Street in downtown Morris and opened up the music store at that time. My dad did a little bit of uh, instrument repair, things that he had picked up while he had been teaching, and then also did a lot of piano tuning. So he was uh, the area piano tuner for a number of years as well. In 1954, so the year after my parents uh, started the store, they went to the music, National Music Convention in Chicago. While there, they uh, went to a club and, and met with Louis Armstrong. It was kind of humorous uh, in that uh, my dad and mom and, and Louis were, were, were standing there, uh, and Louis hands my mother his trumpet and says, here, you hold this, I'll take the money. And he grabbed her purse and he hung onto the purse. So that's the photo with my mom and dad, her holding Louis's trumpet and Louis holding my mom's purse. <laughs> that was kind of humorous. Exactly 30 years later, in 1984, Carlene and I went to the same music convention, national music convention in Chicago. At that time, the, the best known trumpet player in, in, the, in the business was Maynard Ferguson. I talked to Maynard a little bit and I said, you know, 30 years ago, my parents were in Chicago, posed with Louis Armstrong, and this is a photo. Uh, is there any way that we can pose for a photo with you? And, and uh, he said, sure, I'll do that. Anyway, so that was kind of an amusing thing where we had the exact 30-year span in between the operators of the store posing with the best-known trumpet players of the day. And at one time in the early 60s, it was a Sunday morning and stores weren't open, but there was a uh, older gentleman that had just bought a brand new Buick and was not used to the pedals and the uh, other configurations of the car and he tried to get it started from a parking spot on Main Street and he jumped the curb and piled right into the front of our store. So took out the display window in the front door and uh, uh, that was kind of hectic for a few days. We had to board the place up and, 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 and get that done. But nobody got hurt, uh, but he damaged his car quite a bit and one other car on his way across the sidewalk. <laughs> My, my parents ran the music store then uh, until my dad passed away in 1978. So he was in the store until that time. Both my uh, older sisters and myself and my younger brother kind of grew up in the store. We all started working in the store, clerking and doing uh, odds and ends of things here. Uh, I think we all started probably in our junior high years and, and, and worked all the way through school. When the store looked like it was going to be sold, I moved away for a couple of years. I had gone to school at University of Minnesota Morris here, uh, majoring in economics and minoring in music with probably the intention of eventually taking over the store. But then when the time came, um, I didn't really want to do that. I had gone to also to a tech school in Sioux City to learn an instrument repair. So I was pretty well uh, suited to, to run a music business, but uh, the way things were going, I didn't want to do it at that time. The uh, sale for the store fell through, and then while I was in Illinois uh, working for a store down there, I met my wife, Carlene, and we married and uh, moved back up here in 1981 and took over the store from my mother and my younger brother who had been helping her run it at that time. So McCarlene and I have been in the store ever since then. We've had a series of part-time employees over the years, uh, mostly music students at, at the local college at UMM or recent grads that were music students at UMM. And then about 10 years ago, we were fortunate enough to have uh, our current employee, Mike Odello, moved in from California, and he's been working with us ever since. Basically, it's the three of us that keep things going.
we came to Starlet's Music, and he needed a hand. And I said, I'll be that hand. And here we are. I do instrument repair and I call on area schools. I have service routes where I call on about two dozen schools a week. I go out uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays and, and uh, call on about uh, two dozen schools and pick up and deliver repair work. And my wife stays behind in the store and does the clerking and bookkeeping. And we've been running it that way since 1981. We do a lot of things in the area, both with the university and with the local elementary school, where uh, on occasion, uh, either Mike and I or Mike by himself have, have done demonstrations for local elementary students on different musical instruments, uh, what sounds they make, and things like that. We've done both those. We do a lot of things with the university, too. There's two different things that we've done over the years in that uh, for a long time, we've done instrument repair clinics for the music ed majors, where uh, we have a little session and demonstrate how to diagnose and do minor repairs on different instruments so that it can prepare them for their careers as band directors so they know what they're getting into a little bit and can maybe you know, solve some problems that uh, don't have to be sent into a shop or something for a, a brief yeah. amount of time. <laughs> okay. Thanks, you guys. You're awesome. You're awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to go home. Not only is it a retail business and, and provides us with an income, but we're also keeping students in music, helping them to learn instruments, keep them playing, and develop musical skills that will help them later in life. So that's kind of a uh, beneficial part of it too, that's, that's very uh, helpful. Well, music and the arts is very important in the area schools because it uh, helps the students develop parts of their mind that aren't really uh, covered by uh, more core classes like social studies and English and that the arts and music especially expand certain aspects of, of a developing mind and uh, band and choir teach teamwork with students uh, without the chance of getting hurt like playing football or hockey. Those are very important to the development of the students and a uh, music store is important at our area music store, a local music store is very important to keeping those things uh, provided to the area schools. There aren't too many mom and pop music stores around anymore so we're getting to be kind of a, a diminishing breed here. As far as running the business is concerned, very fulfilling to put instruments in the hands of students and then go to a concert and see them playing them or to repair the instruments and keep them playing where a kid will be really frustrated with an instrument that's not working and will do whatever repairs are necessary to, to make it functional again and then see the look on the kid's face when the instrument actually plays well. And, and uh, that, that's very, very fulfilling. It's got its rewards. Can you tell me the joke about uh, the, the trombone player in the playground? Can you tell me that? Sure. How do you tell which children at the playground are the offspring of trombone players? How can you tell them? They're the ones that uh, can't swing and don't know how to use the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Visit pioneer.org slash postcards to catch up on missed episodes and to find out more about your favorite segments. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. Live wide open a regional movement that encourages people to make a great life for themselves in West Central Minnesota. More at livewideopen.com. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com.